This right here has been the end game monitor for me. It's the LG C3, specifically the 42 inch version, and I've been using it for over two years now. And as of making this video, there's no monitor out there that would get me to upgrade from this thing. So let me tell you my experience with it, why I think this can be an end game monitor for many of you as well, and some tips that you should definitely take into account. I think what really set those 42 inch TVs apart are their combination of prices and specs. Now that the LG C5 is out, it means that if you're not chasing the absolute peak brightness the newest model offers, you can often find some sweet deals on the C4. I actually saw it going for just a bit over $700 recently, and considering everything that you get, it's just an absolutely great deal. Or if you can find the C3 in stock, you might be able to find it for an even better deal. Besides some marginal brightness improvements in HDR, the main difference you're looking at is 120Hz versus 144, which, let's be honest, isn't a massive leap for most people. Now, if you're looking to save even more money, have a look at LG's OLED entry-level lineup, the B-series. While they sadly don't have any 42-inch screen size option, there's the 48-inch version of the B4, and that can be had for $600. You're getting so much out of your money with something like this. I haven't personally tried a screen size that large as a monitor, and I think personally for me, that might be pushing it a bit. But at the same time though, I've seen people maining even a 65-inch TV, so... So design-wise, those LG C-Series TVs look absolutely great with the super slim profile. There's just absolutely nothing to complain about. And a big plus for me, no branding on the front. We just started seeing more actual monitors adapting this style, and it just looks so clean. Every monitor should look like this from the front. Initially, I wasn't so sure about the 42-inch screen size for desktop monitor usage. I thought it might be too much. And while that can be the case, which I'll be talking about later in the video, that size turned out to be one of the big reasons as to why I still use it to this day. I've previously had a triple 27-inch monitor setup, and I wanted to go back to a single display setup again, specifically to keep me more focused when I'm working, but at the same time, I've wanted to have as much screen real estate as I can. By going the route of a 42-inch 4K display, I could easily run apps at 100% scaling without things becoming too small for my eyes. Now, if you're using a Mac specifically for UI design, it's worth knowing that macOS handles scaling a bit differently than other operating systems. And so, if you're planning on using this thing at any scale resolution, besides the default one, which honestly just makes the whole UI way too big, will make the output appear less sharp. Personally, I do notice a difference in text clarity, but Honestly, it doesn't really bother me that much. After just a few minutes, the sheer immersion of this 42-inch display just takes completely over. However, if you run this thing at its native non-retinal resolution, that won't be an issue. And in case you find the UI of some apps to be too small, you can try and see if you can scale the app instead. Even though this is not something that works for every single app, most web apps allow you to do this with just a simple command plus and minus combination. If you like playing competitive esports games a lot, you already know this, but this monitor is probably not for you, purely because of its screen size, as your eyes have to travel more to scan the whole display. That extra time adds up, and it's probably going to end up fatiguing you quicker. And while you can use just a small part of the screen for gaming, there are just better gaming monitors out if that's your main focus. For any casual or story-driven games, you'll love this thing. Honestly, the only thing that would get me to upgrade from this thing would be a 5K or a 6K display with at least 120Hz, but at the same 42-inch screen size. Now, this is a big screen, so let's talk about how it fits in your space. If your desk is on the shallower side, you'll want to make sure you can still sit at a comfortable distance away. Aim for at least 3 feet or about a meter to take it all in without feeling overwhelmed. In case you have external speakers or studio monitors, the width of this 42-inch display might mean your speakers end up a bit further apart that you'd ideally want for that perfect sound triangle. Just something to keep in mind for your audio setup. Another thing to consider is buying a monitor arm. The included stand is not really that great, at least for desktop monitor usage. Just remember, beyond its size and weight, you'll almost certainly need a 300 by 200 Visa adapter plate as well. Most monitor arms don't include this specific size, 
So grab on when you get the TV to save yourself a hassle. All right, let's tackle the big one, Burnin. This was definitely a concern for me too when I bought it. So far, I've used it for 2736 hours and I've been using it like any regular monitor. Most of the times, the taskbar are visible on windows, normal wallpapers, and I've been using the display at around 80% brightness most of the time. For burn-in protection, I have screen move enabled and also the adjust logo brightness set to high. Personally, I don't find those options too bothering, but I did use the service menu to disable auto dimming I think it's called ASBO, as that can be way too aggressive. And as for any actual burn-in, honestly, so far so good. I do see a very slight hint of darkening where the Windows taskbar is, but that to my eyes is only visible at around a 70% full white window, and I have to really look for it. In just a regular usage environment, I would have never actually noticed it. For a really deep dive on OLED longevity and how those panels hold up over an extended period of time, definitely check out Tim's video over at Monitors Unboxed. He did some fantastic detailed analysis about his whole experience. Also, by the way, quick note, these are TVs first. While HDMI 2.1 is great, if a DisplayPort is a must for your setup, this isn't the one. Personally, I've experienced DisplayPort to HDMI adapters could be quite finicky sometimes. Also, there is no USB-C port, which can also be another downside if you're a MacBook user looking for that single cable setup without a dock. Being a TV, it means it doesn't sync with your PC's sleep and wake commands like a dedicated monitor would. If that's something that annoys you, connect the TV to your Wi-Fi and set it as a static IP preferably. Then you can use an app called Color Control on Windows. This lets you control the TV power state automatically, tweak other settings, and even access the service menu to disable that ASBL feature we talked about. Pretty handy. You can also set it up to wake up and power it off on Mac, but the whole process is a bit more tedious to set up. No display is absolutely perfect, and these 42-inch OLEDs are no exception. A common thing you might notice with those W OLED TV panels, specifically when used as monitors, is some text fringing. This is something that LG could fix if they would finally switch the subpixel layout, so definitely keep this in mind for future releases. The smart TV software experience is an area where your mileage can really vary and it's a common thing with smart TV softwares in general. While some might bring improvements or new features, others can occasionally lead to performance slowdowns, interface glitches, or just introduce unexpected bugs. And I've personally experienced two bugs that really annoyed me. The first one being the built-in voice assistant, something that got added to my C3 at some point, and honestly, I deactivated it straight from the start, as that's something that I'm not really looking for in a TV. The problem was that even though I had the feature disabled, the freaking thing would sometimes activate on its own back again, and it would randomly appear on the screen without anyone even talking in the room. And the other thing that I've experienced was with the pixel refresh cycle. OLEDs have built-in panel care features, like pixel refresh cycles, which are important. However, at some point last year, I kept getting this notification over and over at least two times per week. And I've always let us do its thing. It turned out to be just some sort of bug and I wasn't the only one who experienced it. Both of these thankfully got fixed. But again, this shouldn't have happened like at all. Even though my experience has only been with the C3 model, this kind of stuff can happen if you go with a TV as a monitor. I think this sums up pretty much everything I wanted to say. If your desk allows for a monitor this size, you're not working with UI design on Mac or playing competitive games, then I think to this day, even with all of its quirks, a 42-inch display can benefit you a lot, especially if you find one at a great price, which you often can.